What's going on guys and gals, Tyler Austin here, founder and CEO of REI SIF, and I am super excited for this last quarter because we have released some amazing features that's gonna increase your productivity, increase your deal flow, increase your net profits, increase everything in your business. We call it the Sensei Flow, and I'm gonna teach you exactly how to implement, implement this flow into your business right now. All right, so the Sensei Flow, the number one issue that we get across users, non-users, it's our number one question is, or, or what we realize is people's problems is that they don't have a flow. They don't have a process to consistently do the same thing every day to drive massive results. So that's what we're gonna cover today. The very first thing though, is to understand what you need to actually execute. So we're gonna cover that. The tools that you need, we call it the armory. Uh, you know, you're a ninja, so you got your tools, you got your armory. Uh, it's really simple. There's three primary tools and a fourth additional. REI SIFT is one, air calls another, tally count is the third, and then lastly, it's simply gonna be Google Sheets. Really simple, okay? So what plans do you need at these? Easy. REI SIF, the professional plan, air call, the essentials plan at monthly is fine. You do need a minimum of three users uh, when you set up air call, so it's $120 a month. Um, and then tally count is absolutely free. No matter how you look at it, whether you have three users, don't have three users, uh, you could realistic, realistically use any click to call, but we specifically really enjoy air call uh, at this very moment. And the total is out to be only $219 a month. That is absolutely ridiculous that you can run such an amazing company, have the most amazing clarity off of less than $300 a month. Shoot, less than $1,000 a month, okay? So uh, go ahead and get these plans set up. If you don't have them yet, get them set up. And then in, in the next video, uh, or next part of this video rather, we're gonna go ahead and set them up on the computer and get them kind of the settings right so that we can do the Sensei flow. All right, so yesterday we covered what tools you need in the armory. Today we're back at it to finish this video up and we're gonna cover how to actually set up these different tools to make sure all the settings are tweaked and everything's how it needs to be to make sure uh, you're not missing anything, okay? So uh, you go ahead and log into your REI SIFT account. Uh, I'm not gonna cover how to fully set up an REI SIFT account and upload your data or do any of that kind of stuff because that's just that's too much for this video. We have tons of other videos on that. If you ever wonder uh, where to find those, you can click on the Help Center in the bottom right corner here. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, watch the Quick Start series, the new account setups from scratch series, stuff like that, okay? In addition to that, on our upload, uh, there's a video pretty much on every step here. Step one, two, three. If you select update data, there's a video here. Select add data, there's a video there. There's videos everywhere, right? For you to find out kind of how to get it up and running and, and start it with REI SIF. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the records page though, uh, so that we're ready later on in this video, all right? So now, next is going to be, let me click hide on this here for you guys. There we go. Um, next is gonna be air call. With air call, I already made my phone number uh, and everything uh, in the previous video, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what you need to do here. So you're gonna start by making sure there's a team member that you need. Uh, click on Teams on the left-hand side, click the drop-down arrow and click Create User. Go through the process, invite them, all that good stuff, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on uh, Numbers and you're gonna click Create Number. Choose Create Classic Number and then choose your country, choose your, your number, um, and then choose who you're gonna assign it to, which is gonna be whatever team member you created. All right, so I've already created one, uh, Tyler A right here. After you create it, you're gonna click on you know, the name or it's gonna ask you to continue setting up your phone number. Go ahead and do that. And uh, underneath of that phone number, make sure you swap out this voicemail um, because it's, it's one of those things that if you don't, you're gonna sound like a chump, right? You're gonna sound like you don't know what you're doing in business. So uh, make sure you put a nice uh, you know, voicemail for yourself. Hey, my name is Tyler, or, or hey, thanks for calling. This is Tyler. Uh, I'm probably you know, on an appointment or, or busy with another customer. Please leave your name, number, and if you have a property you are looking to sell, please leave the address so that I can best serve you when I call you back, something like that. All right, if a closed message should be different than your regular voicemail, it should be something like, hey, uh, it's after business hours, I'm probably hanging out with my kids. Uh, please leave your number. If it's urgent, go ahead and send me a text message, something like that, okay? Um, make sure you let them know that you're still willing to serve them by being able to send them a text message. Um, on that note, with texting and air call, make sure that you email or call your rep that you get set up with when you create an air call account and ask them to add you to air calls beta program for SMS. That way you can send SMSs through your phone number as well. 
Um, preferably, actually, you should do that before you set up this phone number uh, because of the fact that they once they set that up, you got to use a new phone number that's that's enabled for SMS whenever you create the phone number. So, um, OK, so that is air call. The other thing you can do is set up your uh, change your business hours, time zone, all that good stuff. Do that as you wish. Once that's done, you are going to want to make sure you have the Google Chrome extension and you have the air call client installed on your computer like so, and that you're logged in. All right. Now, tally count. Tally count is probably, uh, it's, it's really the meat and potatoes. It's, the, um, it's, it's not the work engine, but it is the thing that uh, we know if our, our coal is getting low or high um, inside of our business, okay? So tally count, really simple tool. It's just a plus and a minus symbol. As long as you can track that, you should be all right. We're gonna create quite a few different little bubbles here though. You to remove or add them, you just click the plus and minus symbol up at the top here. Uh, and we're gonna create a few and name them. The first one's gonna name prospects. The second's gonna be dials, wrong number, correct number. And I could change that so it's more apparent. Correct number. Um, lead, offer made, dead, DNC, unanswered, Davy Jones, which is equivalent to deep prospecting, not interested, direct mail, voicemail, SMS sent, and SMS response. Okay, essentially, as we go through and we, we go through the flow, the Sensei flow, which we're gonna cover here in a little bit, you're gonna be just simply clicking a button, right? And, and we're gonna get some results. We're gonna take those results at the end of the day, and we're gonna create this Google Sheet. In fact, in the description below, we'll actually leave this uh, the link to this Google sheet so that you don't have to worry about creating it. It's already created. Okay. You're going to have your ninja's name. So, you know, your employee's name, uh, the date that they are calling right now, the, the amount of prospects at the end of the day goes here, dials, SMS, dead, DNC, no answer, voicemail, wrong, correct. Okay. Next one is going to be, uh, the next section here is lead, not interested offer, and then follow up deep prospecting direct mail. What you'll notice is that I have three different colors here. Um, the lighter or mid color gray here, you'll notice that each of these actions, uh, well, that's what they are, they're actions. How many you're dialing, SMSing, dead, DNC, those are all dealing with a phone number specifically. All right, lead and not interested in offers dealing with if someone actually picks up the phone uh, and, and it was the correct number, uh, what happens next, all right? And then these are kind of like dispositions. Follow up, it's like, okay, am I following up? Am I gonna send a deep prospecting and direct mail? Not dispositions of the call, but dispositions of the prospect, okay? For example, let's just say you didn't reach all the phone numbers, so you have a bunch of, uh, let's say you have three unanswers out of the eight phone numbers that you have for somebody and you don't have a correct number on a prospect, then you're gonna have a follow-up, all right? We'll explain that in a little bit. All right, so that is the core tools that you need, all right? Uh, so the next thing that we need to do to, you know, in order for you guys to fully grasp this flow, you know, we're taking a bite at a time here, making sure you have each step in lock, is we need to talk about the pyramid of data, right? The tier system of where, like, who are you actually gonna focus on? What is this energy gonna be um, kind of directed towards because we don't want to put this kind of energy towards, let's just say, straight high equity data. That doesn't make any sense. Um, we want to put it towards the, the core data set, the tier one data, and you guys have no idea what tier one is yet, but we're going to go on the iPad now and we're going to cover it. So let's go ahead and hop over to the iPad, cover the pyramid tier, and then hop into covering the Sensei flow. And then I got a secret for you guys at the very, very end of this video that I'm going to tell you guys about on really small prospects that no one ever knows exists and nobody ever does anything with, but you can because you're gonna have the ninja secrets, all right? So, see you guys in, on the iPad. All right, the Sensei flow. So the Sensei flow is, simply put, the way to sequentially go through the hottest prospects that you have, as well as your leads, um, one by one by one, in the, just the most beautiful way possible. Um, think of the most beautiful thing that you can in your mind and then just put Sensei Flow next to it or even above it. And it's probably up to par, all right? Um, it is what's gonna make you save as much money as possible while also increasing that profits, um, while also giving you the clarity and focus, let you sleep at night in your business because you know that everything's being done right and you can scale on top of this process, okay? 
Um, you are gonna get this recording uh, or this, this document that I'm using right now. In addition to, we're gonna do this on the computer right after this, okay? So there's two people that play a part inside of the Sensei Flow. One is your manager and one is the ninja, okay? Sometimes as a new business, you might be both of those people. So don't worry, uh, you're gonna do all of it. You know, that's just the nature of the game. The manager has uh, five primary tasks, but three that I'm showing here. And those are to filter records, okay? To filter records, to assign those records, and then to create presets for the employee, for the ninja, to be able to follow through. You only have to pre create the presets one time because moving forward after that, you're just gonna assign them to the person and then they're gonna have those presets automatically already there, right? So what are we gonna filter by? Well. We're gonna filter and select tier one data that we wanna to market to, right? That we want our ninjas to work through and get a hold of, right? It might be our favorite zip codes. It might be a property that you know you wanna reach out to. It might be, um, let's just say a whole, you know, uh, community, who knows, okay? The next thing is ninja tasks, okay? The ninja task is the person that's actually executing on the marketing campaign. So the ninja is going to select their preset selection all right, so this would be whatever preset. Uh, for example, when we go to the computer, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ones is to put their name and then needs work. So for example, Tyler, and then needs work. All right, what does that mean? Well, it means I need to work on those records. <laughs> really, really simple. Um, you're gonna select a record, all right? And then you're gonna click the first number, all right? Using air call, we're going to dial that phone number. And there's gonna be some outcomes, all right? And only a few outcomes. The number is either gonna be dead, right? Um, which I don't have right here. Let me go ahead and add that here. There's dead outcome, it's missing. Uh, they're going to either be dead, it's going to be the wrong number, it's going to be a correct number, nobody's going to answer, or they are going to answer and they're going to tell you, you know, F off, right? So there's going to be a DNC. Do not call, no answer, correct number, wrong number, and dead is the key outcomes of any phone conversation. I don't care what it is, okay? All of these, as you'll see, will get tags on their records except for the no answer. You don't tag anything as no answer because we're gonna try to call them again. And there's gonna be something else that we do to those records if nobody answers, okay? So here's your, here's your SOP, if you will. If DNC, tag the number as DNC. If no answer, do nothing. If it's a correct number, tag the number as correct number. If it's a wrong number, tag the number as wrong number. Pretty straightforward, right? All right. Dispositioning the record. Remember, we're now going, we went through the whole record, we've called every single phone number and something's happened or something hasn't happened. There was either a correct number or there wasn't. You've tagged all your phone numbers accordingly. So what do those dispositions look like? If it's a correct number, two things have happened. It's either become a lead or it's become not interested, one or the other, or technically it could have became DNC, but that's obvious, okay? So it was either a lead or was not interested. If it was a lead, you're going to change the status of the record to lead, and you're gonna add a task and assign to your acquisitions. Okay, so hey, oh, you are interested in selling? Fantastic. Um, let me go ahead and push you over to, you know, gather your details, do everything you gotta do, whatever you wanna do in your business, okay? And it either gets kicked to a lead manager or it gets kicked to acquisitions. Um, what's beautiful, beautiful about AirCall is with AirCall, you can actually just send it right over to an acquisitions to make an offer right there. So your, your, your ninja can gather all the information, gather all the details, and then say, okay, great. Let me go ahead and connect you to an acquisitions, um, or they wouldn't say acquisitions. Let me go ahead and connect you over to Bob, all right? You on air call, call over to Bob. Bob picks up, hey, Bob, I got Jan on the line. I'm gonna patch her over to you. This is what the situation is. Let me go ahead and bring her in. Bring, bring her in, say, hey, so-and-so, this is Bob, and, he knows your whole situation. He's ready to go ahead and present some options to you. Okay, remember, present some options to you. All right, so if it's not interested, very simply, you're gonna change the status to not interested and create a future task for a follow-up, okay? Very simple. Hey, they're not interested, great. Change the status to not interested. The phone number is already tagged correct number. You're gonna create a task to follow up with that person in three or six months or whatever. And because you already have it tagged as correct number, you got the task in six months from now, three months from now, it's gonna pop up as under your task. Say, hey, call this person. You open up the record, boom, correct number, click the correct number, go through the process again, all right? So if nobody answers, meaning if no answer exists, all right, you're gonna create a follow-up task 
and add a daily direct mail tag. Very important. Add a daily direct mail tag to if no answer happened. So if you had five phone numbers on the record, three of them could have answered and two of them could have not answered. The three or two of them could have been dead, one of them could have been wrong number, and then two of them they could have not answered, for example, okay? If that happens, well, we still wanna recall those two numbers a couple more times. We don't wanna give up on that record. However, we wanna go ahead and add a daily direct mail tag to it because we still wanna make sure I mean, I don't know if I call back those two numbers and they answer in three days, five days, a month from now, who knows? But I know the direct mail will at least be in their mailbox in five to seven days, you know? So it's like, cool, I'd rather get that direct mail piece out. This is my tier one data. I wanna get it worked. I wanna get the answer. We just had a record two days ago. We called it, we SMSed it, nobody answered. We kicked out a direct mail piece. Within a week, we got a response back. Hey, I paid off the taxes. We're not interested in selling. Thank you. It was the same phone number we've been texting and calling. Every other phone number was wrong number, dead or DNC. We had one more good number. It ended up being the number they called us back from. We've been trying to reach them for weeks and they didn't answer, right? So that's why it's important to send the direct, direct mail, okay? We should have done that sooner. All right. Now, what's most important is the whole process that we just went through is being tracked with tally count. Okay, as you click on a prospect, cool, you toggle the prospect. As you dial a number, cool, toggle the you know, dialed number. What's the disposition of that phone number? Is it DNC, is it wrong number, is it correct number, is it dead, what is it? Toggle that, tag the phone number, move and just work through that data and you're just using tally count to track the results of this, this, this flow, this process and then populating that back over that Google Sheet at the end of the day. You do this for a week straight, a month straight, you have the most beautiful KPIs that you can utilize with split testing skip tracing companies, with split testing your callers, with doing a lot of things that nobody else has the capability to refine and improve. What's most important about this process though is that it is a flow, it's a process, it's a system that you can repeat day over day over day over day sequentially, okay, without having to worry about whether you're doing something different one day versus another day. You wake up in the morning and you get, you, you, what well, some are saying, swallow the frog, right? There's a book about there about it, right? Swallow the frog. You wake up in the morning, you knock out your 50 prospects, okay? Which leads me to the next point. You move to the next record. After that, you transfer at the end of day to tally count to Google Sheet. You can create a recurring task for your team to remember to do their KPI population. And then your manager, okay, is simply gonna filter by the daily direct mail tag and send the direct mail. And then when they do that, they're gonna add those direct mail pieces, that, those, those records to the monthly direct mail so you know how many you sent in that month. Then they're gonna make sure the next day of uh, records are assigned. And just a little note, 50 prospects a day minimum. Minimum 50 a day per person. All right, so that's the flow, okay? The last thing I wanna show you guys is under new, uh, if, if it's a correct number or if it's a no answer, rather, if there's no answer, you, that, you'd want to send them an SMS. I didn't write it on here, but you'd want to send them an SMS if it is a um, no answer and it's a mobile phone number, go ahead and kick them an SMS, okay? No answer, if it's mobile, kick them an SMS. You can use that through AirCall to do so, all right? Awesome. That's the flow. Now, let's actually do it inside of REI SIF. Let's show you it. Let's filter down by some records. Let's create some filter presets and let's go through this process on the computer so that we're eliminating all question if you can do this or not do this. The answer is yes, because you have everything laid out in front of you. And this is the last step to make sure that we can handle that objection on why you can't do this in your own business. All right, see you guys in REI SIF. All right, so. We're in REI SIF now and we're ready to start from the top of our flow down. So the very first flow that we had was, and I'm gonna refer over to my screen so I don't veer off uh, from the flow, which I told you guys, um, is the manager task, okay? So we need to be able to filter down into the tier one data. So how can we do that? Well, for me, I think I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that REI SIF gives me some newly vacants every single month and I'm gonna dig into those. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click on filter records and I'm actually gonna use the filter preset for vacant since it'll go ahead and remove out any statuses I don't want. Select property vacant, but I'm gonna go ahead and add in another filter block for last updated vacant or last vacant date rather, my bad. 
And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the 31st of May. Now, here's the thing. The last vacant filter bases anything off of like, uh, if I were to upload a list today and some, property, some properties in that list were vacant, it'll also count towards these. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply filters. I'm gonna rock with that. We're gonna see how many we have. So that put us down to 343 records that are fit that category. So that's pretty good. Those are vacant records that uh, became vacant this month. So they're brand new vacancies. Um, I could even maybe go back to records that were vacant, let's say six months ago, right? And they were vacant six months ago. As long as you've been in, the data has been in your account for six months, we're gonna track, hey, it's been vacant one, two, three, four months. And I could just go back to that date and I can see, okay, properties that were last became vacant back that long ago. That'd be a pretty good niche list, um, tier one data. But let's kind of narrow it down a little bit more and let's filter by records that are also on multiple lists here. So let's do uh, list count two or more. Okay, let's apply. And that took us down to 10 records. That's crazy. We went from, I have 375,000 or, or so records in my account down to 10 that became vacant in, Ju in June of 2021, which is the month that we're in. They became vacant in June. They're on multiple lists and I haven't reached them yet. That's fantastic. So this would be something that we consider uh, being in tier one. It's vacant, newly vacant, it's stacked. The only thing that we can make this even crazier is if we would do like uh, absentee, yes. Boom, so still 10. So all 10 of these are still absentee, meaning they don't receive mail at that property, which heightens our chance that these properties are um, not lived in for sure because they're vacant, okay? So a couple things I noticed from this screen here is that the skip trace, um, this one here shows that we attempted to skip trace it 147 days ago, but we don't have phone numbers. I know that because it's yellow. If I open it up, it's not gonna have any phone numbers. I can go back to that records page and I can see this one's blue, which means it's actually recently skip traced. Tax link went high equity. Um, and it's been recently skip traced. Um, so that's good, it was skip traced a few days ago. Uh, and the rest of these are gray. Some of these were skip traced many, many, many months. Some of them over a year and a half ago is the last time they were skip traced and I don't have any statuses on them. So think about this, think about what we're doing here. These have been skip traced over a year and a half ago. They've been marketed to many times, but we don't really know if we've reached them or not reached them, but we do. what we do know is that they're not a lead and we haven't, we haven't updated them as being so. So I could open this record and I could see none of these phone numbers have been reached because they're not tagged. If they were tagged, that means I would have reached them, right? And they're on tax auction and high equity list. Did this go to tax auction or didn't it? Um, so there's a lot of really important things that we can see just by narrowing down. Why have I not reached this person I skip traced almost two years ago? How, why? Why is that? None of these phone numbers are tagged, but they've been on a lot of different marketing campaigns. The problem is that this has been operating back in the day when I operated at tier three data level where I just cold called everything. I was never gaining any of that insight. I never knew what records weren't being reached. Well, that's all gone now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these records and I'm gonna assign them to myself. So I've selected them. I filtered down by the data that I wanted. Now I'm gonna assign them. So I'm gonna go manager or manage, assign to user. I'm gonna go ahead and assign these to myself right now, just for the sake of our example. All right, so those have been assigned to myself. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out our filter now. Let's just reset back to the records page. And now I can see if I toggle assign to me, I'm only gonna see those 10 records. Different user uh, permissions inside REI SIF says that if you're an acquisitions person, you'll only see what's assigned to you anyway. So they, don't, they can't see all the other data. That's why you have a manager and a prospector. They can't touch anything else that they're not supposed to be touching. All right, so the third step for a manager was to go ahead and create presets. So let's go ahead and do that. Why are presets important? Well, because they kind of hold the hand of the flow. You have the records that still need to be reached out to, you have the records that need to be followed up with, and then you have the records that are going the deep prospecting, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and create some filter blocks here really simply. Um, we're gonna click add new filter block and we're gonna do assign user and we're gonna do all the records that are assigned to me. And I'm gonna add another filter block for property statuses and we're gonna do, um, do not include and we don't wanna include any property statuses. Why? Well, because they're records that we need to be able to reach, right? So we're gonna leave it like that for now. I'm gonna click save new and I'm gonna name this Tyler needs 
work. So these are all the records that are assigned to me that have not been reached because, well, they don't have a status, okay? So we're gonna save that. So we're gonna build off of this, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the not, let's see, where's the follow-up? I'm gonna remove the follow-up one from here, okay? And we're gonna switch it to include follow-up. So now we're saying remove everything else and only include follow-up. And we're gonna save new, and we're gonna call this Tyler follow-up, okay? And you, so you can basically use filter presets to hold the hands to pretty much everything that you need. Create any kind of type of filters and then just name it you know, whatever you want, and you can kind of then create an SOP to say, hey, you know, Ninja, first click on needs work, get us through your 50 records a day, then go to your follow-up, complete your tasks on our follow-up, and so on and so forth. Okay, so lastly, we're gonna go ahead and remove follow-up and just add it back. And then um, we're gonna add, remove from here, where's it at? Prospecting, we're gonna remove prospecting and say include prospecting, okay? And then we're gonna save new, and we're gonna say Tyler Davy Jones. Now, something to remember here, and you can call that deep prospecting, whatever you want. I just think it's funny calling it Davy Jones. All right, so what is deep prospecting? Deep prospecting is the records which become exhausted. These are people who have phone numbers, and every single one of those phone numbers were bad. I'm gonna give you an example of what that looks like. Something to know if you have a team, if you're as you scale, is this, this one here, you're gonna wanna assign this to somebody else to do the deep prospecting, right? You're gonna to wanna to offload that administrative task to doing the research to find siblings, re-skip tracing, all that kind of stuff. That's gonna be done by somebody else, okay? I'm gonna tell you guys a cool thing that we have at REI SIF that will allow you guys to find more information about how to do deep prospecting, okay? So um, that's the main filter presets we need. So if I were to come in here, uh, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, okay, where, what do I need to do? All right, so first I'm gonna start on what needs work. Click on that, click apply, boom. There's my 10 records. Now, let's just say I open up this record and I'm gonna start with this, this record here that has these three phone numbers, all right? What is my process? Well, now I'm move, moving over to my ninja task, right? I've selected my first step is, you know, preset selection, done, all right? Select record, done. Click first phone number, boom. Oh, I need to uh, log in to air call. Okay, so now air call is here um, and Sometimes I have uh, issues with my Google Chrome. Uh, it's just because of being in a test environment all the time where sometimes it doesn't pop up. Worked with us this time around. Um, so that's good. So I click on it, I call the number, okay? Now, remember, you have your outcomes. What's gonna happen? I'm either gonna have a DNC, no answer, correct number, or a dead number. So after that call, it's gonna end, and I'm gonna click this pencil, and I'm gonna tag it accordingly. Let's just say this was a dead number, okay? Then we're gonna click the next one, boom. Then we, you know, hang up, what happened? Let's just say it was the wrong number. Okay, boom, call the next one. They pick up. Okay, let's say that one was a dead number again, right? They didn't pick up, right? So boom, all of those are done. We're gonna click save changes. And now we can see, I go to the record, I say, oh, all these, all these phone numbers have been, have been called and something happened. What happened? Dead, wrong, dead, oh crap. What happens now? Okay, well, what should happen? This is an exhausted record. So this needs to go to prospecting. So I'm gonna show you guys, if I go now to my records page, because I'm filtered by that filter, if I filter back to um, needs work, what's gonna happen is, is that record's gonna disappear. So now we only have nine. But if I were to filter by my other one, right, my Davy Jones, this record is under here because now it fits those parameters. And that's because it needs to be researched. We need to find out what's going on with this record, right? Click on the owner, and wow, look at that. If this scenario did happen, if, if let's just say all three of those numbers were bad or wrong number, you, this guy actually owns one, two, three, four properties, right? So this is the type of insight you're missing out on by doing a lot of really bulk marketing is, I need to reach this person. I need to find out where he actually lives, not a PO box, and I need to try and get a hold of him so that I can see if he wants to sell those four properties, okay? So that's a great example, okay, of a, you know, what's called a dead record or, or a, an exhausted record that needs to go to deep prospecting. Now, in this situation, I would still send out, then add the daily tag, right? Because this is dead. This is equivalent to no answer happening. Uh, so therefore, it needs the daily tag. What does that look like? Well, today is the 
22nd of June, so it'll be 22 June DM. Okay, so we're gonna add that direct mail tag on there. So at the end of the day, the manager can filter by that tag, send those records direct mail, so that we at least can make sure that PO box is getting a direct mail piece added to it, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and remove that for now. Well, I'll leave it on there. Um, let's just say, for example, this last phone number wasn't dead, but nobody answered, okay? Let's just say it looked like that, where it was, it was you know, no, no phone tag at all. Well, that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna end up switching uh, this to follow up instead of, of um, prospecting, okay? So we're gonna switch it to follow up, and we're gonna create a task here. Just click add new task and we're gonna create a follow up task. All right, and we're gonna assign it to myself and we're gonna put it for tomorrow, for example. Okay, and then click create task. Okay, so now we're gonna see that I have a task there. If I click on my, my toolbar here, you're gonna see that tomorrow I have a task for this individual. I can click on there and it'll take me back to that record and oh, I gotta call this phone number, okay? So then I call it, they didn't answer. Okay, cool, let me, let me complete this task and create a new task to follow up you know, a second time. And after I do that a few times, guess what? Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push it to deprospecting because I, I'm not gonna wait to call it 15 times and see if he answers, all right? This is a landline, so I'm not gonna SMS it. Um, so we're gonna go through and work that data. So the process is, again, we click a record, we get the outcome. If it's a DNC tag, we tag it as DNC. Um, as such, to say it's DNC, I tag it as DNC. If it's no answer, you don't tag any phone number. However, you do switch this to follow up, okay? And then we are gonna add the direct mail tag and we're gonna create a task to follow up, okay? If it's a wrong phone number, we tag it as wrong phone number. If it's a correct number, what happens now? Let's just say this last one was a correct number, okay? Um, correct number, boom. Well, what happened? Hey, you know, uh, what was this dude's name? Uh, hey, uh, hey, Tim, uh, this is Tyler. I was calling to see if you're interested in selling a property at 110 Kenwood Avenue. Oh yeah, I'd be interested in selling it. Okay, cool, he's interested in selling it. Would well, you mind if I you know, get a little bit of information from you? Yeah, sure, do you have seven minutes? Yeah, I got seven minutes, all right, cool. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the property? You know, walk me through it. You know, when was the last time the roof was replaced? And, and, and just tell me as much information as you can. He tells me information, I'm writing that in my notes here, and then conversation comes to an end. Okay, Tim, um, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I actually do have uh, one of our specialists available to create, you know, give you some options with the property. Do you mind if I just put you on a brief hold? I'm gonna go ahead and call him, tell him about the situation, and then I'm gonna link you with him. Is, is that okay? He's gonna say, yeah, that's fine. Like, okay, cool. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna assign this to your acquisitions person. You're going to switch it to a lead in this system, and then you're gonna create a task for him. Meanwhile, you're gonna go ahead and push it over um, through air call, which we can do here if I show you. Um, if I were to call my, uh, well, I can't call myself, but if I were to call somebody, I'd have the ability to connect to the phone, okay? You'll see that, no problem. I have confidence that you'll be able to get that done, okay? Y'all be able to connect with, with someone from my team, uh, and I'll be able to talk with them for a second, and then I can bring in that individual and let them know and do that handoff, okay? You guys can have a script for that all you want, all right? But create a task for them to make offers, okay? You can even round robin it. Let's just say you don't have to where someone's readily available. Well, round robin it uh, to your acquisitions team, all right? Round robin it, assign it to those, and it'll automatically get assigned to whatever acquisitions person you want to handle that prospect, um, or really a lead at this point, okay? And then you just create task, and it's gonna round robin, and it's gonna become a task. It's not gonna show under you, but it's gonna show here, and it looks like it assigned it to Zach Woolridge, it must be a, a acquisitions in this account. Okay, so therefore, boom, there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and click complete that task for him, and I'm gonna go, going to go ahead and remove uh, these phone tags so I don't keep it like that. Save, and now, at the end of the day, what's happened? Notice I don't have any more uh, records under there because now they're under lead. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clear out my filters. Okay, and we've went through and as I'm calling, by the way, I missed this part, I apologize. As I'm calling through each of these records, say I have this one here, I'm actually going under prospects. I, I called one prospect, he had three phone numbers, okay? And then one of them was wrong, one of them was, uh, well, none of them were correct number, we'll say. 
Uh, he wasn't a lead. We didn't make an offer right now. One of them was a dead number. One of them was DNC, okay? Um, if it was unanswered, we toggle unanswered, and so on and so forth. If you sent a text message, we toggle that. If you got a response from SMS, we toggle that, and so on. You go through that process, okay? Now, at the end of the day, after you get through, after you reach 50 underneath prospects, what you're gonna do is under the KPIs, you're gonna have your caller, right? They're gonna populate that information here, okay? And then you're gonna be able to review that at the end of the day, all right? So, after that's all said and done though, your manager's gonna come back, and then your manager is going to filter by the tag 22 June direct mail. Okay, click apply and boom, there's that record. Um, I have the status as a lead still. We're going to remove that. Um, and they're going to select it, go under send to direct mail, select a mail piece, and we're going to get that direct mail kicked out. Uh, let's just say um, we go ahead and put it here and we'll put my office address because I want to show you one more thing. Uh, let's go ahead and do a tracking number, website. Okay, um, under the add tags to the records, okay, this we're gonna put the uh, June direct mail tag, right? We're gonna put uh, the whole month of June because we wanna add those records so that everything in June that got direct mail sent is under one primary uh, you know, direct mail tag. In the future, we will be adding a next step to this where you do you want to associate it with an actual campaign, like a monthly campaign or not, and we can track it from that perspective, but it's not out yet. So for now, this works perfectly fine, all right? So that's the full flow. Now the manager has done that. The manager has sent his direct mail or her direct mail. What's gonna happen next? Well, real simple, we need to make sure that we come in here and filter by the next you know, set of records that we wanna have. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to come back in here again uh, and filter down by whatever we want. Maybe we wanna focus on a specific zip code. We can get creative. We can add some filter blocks. You know, we can filter by a specific zip code and we can narrow down and, you know, you wanna have some sort of rhyme or reason. Maybe you're, you're focusing on like vacant properties in a specific area and you kinda of work through 50 of them a day. Um, but this is gonna give you the ultimate insight. So. That is the full flow from start to finish. Creating the filter presets, calling the phone numbers, toggling the tally count, populating that information inside of a KPI Google Sheet. Um, and then lastly, the only other thing you need to do is make sure the direct mail gets out, send the, the, assign the next records to the next individual, they wake up in the morning, boom, they repeat the whole process again. It's really smooth, it's really efficient. A caller can easily get through 50 prospects a day and you're knowing, you're doing everything you need to do to those prospects. You're calling the phone numbers, you're SMSing the mobiles that end up needing to be uh, sent because they didn't answer their phone, and then you're also sending that direct mail piece, okay? You're doing sequential marketing, su super hyper-focused, and you're working through the records. No different than you do in bulk marketing, the difference is we're doing it real time. In bulk marketing, we gotta, you know, against tier three data or even tier two data, we gotta, call through the list multiple times, try to generate some leads. Then we have to you know, take that whole list. We gotta get it over to SMS. We gotta go through it again. Then we gotta do direct mail. It's happening in, in such a way to where the hot prospect could have already sold their property over the course of the three months that it took you to go through that whole cycle, okay? So you can still do that stuff, but you gotta be able to figure out who are you not reaching that you need to be reaching and what's the next step. Taking those records and kicking over to deep prospecting. Our statistics show that nearly a third, if not more, of the prospects that you try to reach out to, all phone numbers are, are wrong or dead or will never answer, okay? Over a third, okay? Nearly half actually to be specific on the no answer component. So those need to be known. Most people just continue to call through and they're like, oh, my list is dead. I'm not getting any pickups. Well, that's because they don't want to be called. Like you don't have good numbers yet for those individuals. You, they might pick up and after a while, but really they'll probably respond to maybe direct mail. Okay, but you need to know that answer sooner than later. And that's what this process is all about. All right, so if you have any questions, reach out to my team, okay? My team can take care of you. Um, the REI SIF Mastermind community on Facebook can take care of you. But I told you a golden secret at the very end, okay? And that was the individuals who 
actually uh, were exhausted. Like, like you went through every single record and you couldn't reach them no more. Um, so they get kicked over to deep prospecting. Uh, we actually have, and the link will be in the show notes, we have a whole program. Uh, it's actually a two hour live training that I did, go no going myself, deep prospecting myself, I should say, um, and, and finding all the information, all the OSINT and Google hacking techniques and everything that's needed for you to be able to uh, have one of your employees watch for that training and then find these people who aren't being found here. So you're intaking data, you're marketing to it, you're kicking stuff over that you can't find and you're creating a sequential flow that you can believe in, that you can track, that's non-questionable, there's no confusion, there's no, well, how do I set up the dialer? Well, how do I do this? Well, how do I do that? It is really precise, it's really simple, it's, a, it's, it's all in this video. You never have to think any further. Until you're producing a good sum of revenue doing this tactic that many other massive companies utilize, you should not go out there and try to grow above that. You know, once you get some revenue in your business, now we hire a cold caller um, to hit maybe that tier two data and work through that. And you can watch another video that we have, which will show you, you know, how you set up those connectors to those call tools uh, or those Zen call integrations, because we have outbound and inbound integrations to be able to update your data real time while doing that bulk marketing strategy. So after that campaign is finished, you can filter by the same records and figure out what you're gonna do with them next, okay? So. Man, what a video, right? Uh, There's a lot of information. I spit it at you guys relatively quickly because we want to make sure this video is a good length. But go back through, watch it again if you need to, take some notes, but think about the simple principles. Air call, REI SIF, Google Sheets, Tally Account. Four tools, less than $300 a month, and uh, 50 prospects a day. Filter, call, update, send mail, filter, call, update, send mail. Really simple, okay? Can't get any simpler than that. You can't build a six figure or seven figure company any easier, I promise you. It doesn't exist anywhere else. So thank you guys so much, I appreciate you. Uh, don't forget to sub subscribe to the YouTube channel, like it, all that other stuff if you guys wanna see more actionable playbooks. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the Sensei Flow. Peace.